Hey, Shalom, brother Ara, coming to you with another video. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachach Wadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father through the name of the only begotten Son, through the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible. And Shalom to all you Akiyam and you Akwa, those of the hopeful elect that are seeking for salvation. And I want to do a lesson going into. The mere fact that the Lord is speaking through his prophets, even in these times, just like he did in ancient times, the Lord always speaks to his prophets. And when you read Hebrews one and one, it says the most high who at sundry times or sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. That proves a point that the Lord always speaks through his prophets that he raises up. When you read Amos 3 and let's see, Amos 3 and 7, it says, Surely the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And that's who he speaks through. So, of course, he's going to reveal secrets to the same prophets that he wants to uh, get the message to go and pass it on to the people. Same thing that's happening in these times. So like when I brought out Hebrews 1 and 1, I'll read that again. The Most High who was sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And the NLT says long ago, the Most High spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets, through our forefathers, through the prophets in which, which we are our forefathers back in reincarnation. So when Ezekiel was on the scene, for example, the Lord had him set up a display. I'll, I'll bring some of it out. Ezekiel, the Lord required him to set up a display to portray what would happen to Israel. Okay, to the city of Jerusalem, which, of course, the Israelites dwelled in Jerusalem. Ezekiel 4 and 1 says, Thou also, son of man, take thee a towel and lay it before thee and portray upon it this the city even jerusalem okay that portrait that portray is all right it says a decree uh, inscribe a set all right let me see uh, depict someone or something in a work or art or literature a paint or describe so he had him set up a display sort of like a like almost like a project, you know, um, you know, a science project, you set up a a prompt or a display, a portrait, something indicating a uh, message that you're trying to get across. So the Lord had Ezekiel set up a portrait, a, a portrait, as it says, verse verse two says, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it set the camp also against it and set battering rams against it round about okay i'm gonna read that in nlt it says and now son of man take a large clay brick and set it down in front of you then draw a map of the city or Jer of jerusalem on it right that display verse 2 says show the city under siege build a wall around it so no one can escape set up the enemy camp and surround the city with siege ramps and battering rams. You know, and it goes on to read, it goes on to describe more instructions that the Lord had Ezekiel perform and display to send a message. All right. Prophesying, which means to tell you before of what is about to happen. And eventually it took place. Right. Um, the Lord sent an army against Jerusalem to besiege Jerusalem. So. You know, that's how the Lord speaks through his prophets. He's done it in different ways, different styles, just like um, Isaiah. The Lord had Isaiah prophesy naked for three years, indicating that the Lord would send the Assyrian army to destroy Ethiopia and I believe Egypt. So and, and, and they were carted off in captivity by the Assyrian uh, army naked showing you that the lord does things strategically and he sends a message a dramatic message for a reason 
Now I want to bring out Jeremiah 28 and 8. Jeremiah knew this and he understood. Jeremiah 28 and 8 says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied, which means, again, to tell you before those displays, those diverse manners, right? In sundry times. It says, And before thee of old prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, and of evil and of pestilence so that is exactly what's happening in these times the lord says he's going to send a sign of jonas which are the prophets the prophets are going to warn you of what's getting ready to happen to babylon the great which is america ran by the edomites this is the edomites heaven their rulership is about to be destroyed via war world war three evil bad times diseases uh famine Right, civil war, foreign troops are getting ready to invade this place. Right, all hell is about to break loose, and you have end of pestilence, diseases. So that's the the process that the Lord uses to indicate a kingdom is about to be destroyed. We're witnessing the prophets on the scene now. Right, and it started with Elder Abba Bivens, okay, which we know to be John the Baptist. The Lord says he's going to send. Uh, you know, uh, matter of fact, let me get it. Malachi four and one, uh, or is it four and six? I'll start at verse five. It says, "Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord." Elijah the prophet also is John the Baptist. Okay, if your spirit can receive. Okay, so the Lord sent forth Elder Abba Bibbins, which makes sense because, you know, uh, we would need to see. Uh, John the Baptist or Elijah, okay, which was Elijah in reincarnation before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So we're witnessing the times where the great and dreadful day of the Lord's return, okay, to this kingdom is about to happen. So that had to, the, the gospel had to be ushered in, in which the truth is being, you know, uh, expanded and, and uh, pushed out via the Lord sending forth first Elder Abba Bivens. Okay, it trickled down to um, High Priest Ariya, um, High Priest Yaquab, High Priest Ariya, King Masha, and it continued on through the legacy. The Lord, you know, kept on the spirit of our uh, apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone, right? And it, it continues on down. So the word is being pushed out. Okay, so um, going back to uh, the point I was trying to make, when you read Ezekiel, the times we're in. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and I'll start at, uh, I believe it's, um, just want to hit the point here. Ezekiel uh, 37 and 15, it says, The word of the Lord came again unto me, this is the Lord speaking to Ezekiel, it says, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions. This stick goes back to plank. It goes back to plank. Right. Just to prove that here, you see plank, right? Plank, a long, thin, flat piece of timber used, especially in building and flooring, a foundational point of a of a political or of a program a board so this plank uh is similar to you no know, a display that the lord had ezekiel set up it was to indicate something right it's a display it's a a portrait as the scripture call it and this stick the plank has all 12 tribes judah and his companions joseph and their uh, and the stick of Ephraim, the northern kingdom, and their companions. So all twelve tribes would be on this plank. So this is literally being fulfilled. That's how you know we are in the last days, right? And that the prophets are on the scene, you know, uh, performing the, the diverse manners, various ways that the Lord used to speak to the people. Now He's doing it via using a display on the highways and byways. Okay, verse seventeen says, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand right showing that showing you that the 12 tribes are coming in coming together right they're going to come together 
Okay, but that first have to know that we got to show our people who they are. Okay, because our people don't know who they are. We've we've been discontinued from our heritage, and now we're coming back to finding out who we are. You know, uh, through the Lord, you through the Lord using the holy prophets, speaking through the prophets. Right. Verse eighteen says, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto them, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? They're going to ask, What is this? What is this about? In which we often hear about that. When we on the highways and byways, now people ask the question, Yo, what's this about? You know, I see, you know, these people on the sign, and then we say, Well, does your father go back to this this which um, tribe does your father go back to? We kindly tell them, hey, you you are an Israelite. This is, you know, you're from the tribe of Judah, for example, or Benjamin or whatever tribe that their father goes back to. And it brings in the basically the hopeful elect. All right. But our people have to know who they are as a display coming back to um, our heritage. OK. And then we also go into who they should be serving, how they should be conducting themselves, what's about to happen to America. Babylon, Babylon the Great, etc. Right? So we are literally living in the time of the prophets being on the scene, which means that something major is about to happen. Right? And we know it's going to be the ushering of, you know, uh, the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom that the Lord promised to the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Second Ezra 15 and 1 says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. It's the Lord commanding his prophets to do exactly what he uh, instructed us to do. That's why doing exactly what we're instructed to do is important. You no, know, when the Lord had told Ezekiel to make the um, layout, the display the exactly the way he wanted it to, it was for a purpose. And we've got to follow those instructions. We got to be in season, out of season, week in and week out. We got to bring that plank. You know, we got to prophesy the hundred percent truth according to the Bible. Otherwise, you're going off the script. OK, or at least the Lord is not dealing with, with you. Right. So the prophecies have to match up. We got to tell them what the true MOTB is, which is the Karagma. Tell them Jacob's trouble is coming. There's a famine coming. This place is about to be destroyed and the everlasting kingdom is coming. So Yahweh Shai is about to return. So this is real talk, man. We live in some very prophetic um, monumental times, so to speak. OK. All these things are about to literally um, happen where the Lord is getting ready to perform everything he said he was going to do. Jeremiah 23 and 20 says the anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. And, you know, the prophets are, are, are through the spirit of the Lord displaying and telling the people what's about to happen and what's the Lord's intent, what's in his heart. OK, and. You know, by what was instructed for the prophets to, to tell. We also have displays of the missiles because the Lord is going to use the nuclear missiles to destroy this place. OK, which he he will perform right in these latter days. We also show um, the, um, the you know pictures of these heathen nations going into slavery. <laughs> Brothers got pictures of Esau in chains and these other nations. Right. This place is going down, man. It says, in the latter days, he shall consider it perfectly. If you, if the Lord is dealing with you and he's opened up your mind, put the spirit on you, you're going to really understand we in the latter days. A lot of our people have a zeal. They know something's not right, but they can't put it together. They can't, you know, piece it together. All right. But nevertheless, we are literally living in those times, y'all. We living in those times. This time, this, this place is not going to uh, tarry on too long. It's not going to tarry on too long. You know, the Lord gave the Lord also spoke through Daniel using um, uh, visions that he gave him dreams, right? Visions that he gave him that he gave Nebuchadnezzar. And he made it to where he revealed those dreams to Daniel to interpret them. He was he was doing that by way of he was making Daniel prophesy by way of visions. The Lord does things uh um, prophesy speaks through the fathers in many ways man Ezekiel 2 and 5 says and whether they will hear or whether they will forbear for they are a rebellious house speaking of the nation of Israel right yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them so at some point in time 
if it doesn't click for the hope uh, for 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 those that are not a part of the hopeful elect right the rest of our people are gonna know that the whole time that the men that was out there with the planks and the sackcloth the garments you know um prophesying telling you the things is getting ready to happen were really sent by the lord because the display and all the you know um crying aloud and sparing not the prophesying is about to happen it's about to be fully uh performed the lord's going to perform everything he intends to perform but for a lot of our people it's going to be too late but it is what it is i mean but the point is man the lord is speaking clearly man we in those times the lord is speaking loud and clear um the doors of mercy is about to close repent before it's too late because it definitely is about to be too late in this place all praises to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone Shalom.